Hey guys, it's Alex from European Coffee Trip and this video is all about Chemex. I have to admit that even though I love Chemex as a design object, I've never spent enough time brewing with it. So for this video, I ask our friend Brody from the Nomad Barista for help. Brody is a Canadian photographer and content creator who travels a lot and creates amazing coffee videos from coffee farms or coffee tours. But when at home, he brews with Chemex all the time. We thought he's the best person to teach you the basics of Chemex, but also some professional tips and tricks he learned over time. So, over to Brody. Hey, coffee nerds. I'm Brody, and today I'm going to show you a few ins and outs of brewing coffee with the Chemex. Now, you may have seen this thing in your local coffee shop, maybe while browsing pics on Instagram, they make really beautiful pictures. You may have even read about it in an old James Bond book. But the point is, it's actually been around since the 40s. Uh, it was invented over in the US, and it continues to be a classic coffee brewer to this day, probably due to its slick design, ease of use, and just downright crisp coffee flavors that come through in the cup. Here is one of my go-to recipes for the Chemex, and I'm gonna show you some of the tips and tricks that I've learned along the way for getting the most out of this brewer. So here's the recipe really quick. We're gonna use 30 grams of coffee at a medium to coarse grind, and I'll explain why in a minute. And then pouring over 480 milliliters of water at 97 degrees Celsius. We're gonna do all of that over the course of three minutes. Sounds pretty straightforward, but that's where the technique comes in. Now, let's talk really quickly about the filter. Now, this is not your typical Chemex filter. They come in a range of different varieties, bleached paper, craft paper, square, rounded, but they all do have something in common, and that is the thickness and the density. Now, this is a cloth filter. I've actually picked out a fresh new one for you guys just to show you how I use the cloth filter uh, to brew my Chemex, but I will occasionally use a paper filter as well just to get a little bit more clarity in the cup. This one also has double wall, and that, you know, that is one of the benefits of using a Chemex is just the way that it's able to filter out a lot of those oils and a lot of those fine particles to produce a very clean cup of coffee. So I just ground up 30 grams of coffee here in my hand grinder, but as you know, any grinder will do. Just make sure that you use coffee that is as fresh after grinding as possible. So we've got 30 grams, and as you can see, I'm using my little scale here. This is for me to be able to make sure that the recipe is as precise each time as possible because we are using very precise measurements. If you deviate from that, it's not a problem, but just make sure you do it in a controlled way so you know what you're changing and that will affect the extraction. So we're gonna pop our filter on here. I've never used this one before. It's nice and clean. We're gonna reset the scale, 30 grams of coffee. Pop that right in. So I mentioned earlier that I like to use a slightly coarser grind size. And that is, you know, I get a lot of questions about this. Why is the coffee clogging up in my Chemex? And I'm gonna show you a few reasons for that. But one of them is because you've just ground too fine. Now let's just get pouring and I'll explain the rest. So we're gonna set the timer. We've got water at 97 degrees here and we're gonna just start pouring away. Now, try to pour in concentric circles, and this is the pre-infusion phase, what we call the bloom. It allows the coffee to degas a little bit and just you know soak in that initial water. By the way, after the bloom, you only wanna let it go for around 30 seconds to 45 seconds. So we're gonna just start pouring right away here. And that was, six, that was 60 mils of water, so double our coffee weight. So again, the reason why you might be getting clogging here in the Chemex, and this is the reason which differentiates the Chemex from other pour over brewers, is as you can see, the side here is completely smooth. There's no ridges, there's no divots. And so this flat glass actually creates a little bit of a vacuum and 
I just poured to 200 milliliters here. That's a good place to kind of like stop and let it drip. But the problem is that sometimes that vacuum prevents the water from dripping down as fast. So sometimes throughout my brew, what I will do is just lift it up a little bit. Let some of that, you know, pressure come out, especially with the, the hot air in there. Let some of the pressure come out and then the coffee will continue dripping down. Now I'm gonna continue pouring. So I was at 200 milliliters and I'm gonna continue going now until 400 milliliters. And as I stated, our final recipe is 480, so that should give us a good time frame within the three minutes. So let's pour that in. And now as we wait for this to drip down, this is a very meditative process, but I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the Chemex. The reason why I like using the Chemex is because you can actually make more coffee with it. You know, I love using the AeroPress, the V60 espresso machine, but with the Chemex, if you're serving a few people, you can actually load more coffee in. 30 grams is great to share, you know, with two people, a small cup, but they do come in smaller sizes. It's great for, you know, just if you want one cup, um, they come in bigger sizes if you have more people around. So that's one really good um, reason to use the Chemex. So now the water has reached the bottom of these coffee grounds and we're just gonna top it off up to 480 mils. And as you can see, we're just approaching the three minute mark. Um, the reason why we don't wanna go too much over that three minute mark is because, and the reason why having coffee clog up in the filter is not desirable is because you, you risk over extracting the coffee. So I find that, you know, if you can get it to go down, use a slightly coarser grind, lift that up if you have to, uh, but it's not always necessary. And then that ensures that you have a much more medium extraction, you know, not too under extracted, not too quick, not too over extracted, taking too long. And that over extraction is going to produce a lot of bitter notes in your cup. And the under extraction is going to produce a lot of sour or acidic notes that are not necessarily desirable. But the nice balance and blend of those two extremes is what produces a well-balanced cup. So there we are at the end. All you have to do is take this filter off, put it on another cup so that it's not dripping everywhere. And then take your favorite cup. I like to use a smaller one because I'm gonna be sharing. And you just pour it right in. As you can see, it's a very nice, you know, my pinky tends to go up like this just for balance. <laughs> but you know, it's a very nice pouring mechanism. It looks beautiful on the shelf and it produces a very clear, crisp, clean cup of coffee. So the Chemex Brewer was actually the first coffee brewer that turned me on to the idea of specialty coffee. Um, so I'm sure that it can do the same for you. I've had a lot of feedback from people over the years like, ah, I just don't really like Chemex or, oh, it's just, I don't quite know how to use it. It's too, you know, too watery or it's too bitter, but there are really great strategies to getting uh, a good cup out of it. Just takes a little bit of finessing, a little bit of work, but I am sure that you can learn to love this beautiful coffee brewer. Mm. I just can't get enough. Thanks for joining. See you next time. Thank you guys for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video and let us know if there are some additional tips and tricks that you are using when brewing coffee with Chemex. And if you like this video, subscribe our channel and also Brody's channel because we would love to do some more cooperations in the future. So thank you and see you soon. Bye bye.